Alright, uh, hello YouTube. Today's video is going to be on the subject of checking run out on your big machine wheels in the interest of gaining more information about wave and what might be causing it. <coughs> the reason I wanted to make this video so badly is that when I got these wheels brand new, they were out two thousandths of an inch at a round. So, basically my worry is that some guys out there experience wave, they get to throw in parts at this thing, and they put a new set of wheels on there thinking, okay, brand new set of wheels will be perfect. I mean, they're brand new. They're from the factory. Think about it. And then they get them. They're out two thousandths of an inch. They rule out the wheel thinking, you know, well, it can't be the wheel. We got brand new ones. And and, and, and to add to that, I'm not even suggesting that two thousandths of an inch is some kind of significant amount for wheels to be out around or that that would cause significant wave. I don't really know what would, but... In the interest of gaining more information, and some guys out there does a little tutorial that might think that this is a little over their head, it's not at all. These, these, uh, this equipment is cheap. This is, this is not over anyone's head by any means. And I think it'd be great if a lot of guys out there would start checking this. <coughs> now, what's the solution to it? I don't know. Maybe we could find somebody, a body shop that would, uh, or not body shop, a machine shop, rather, that could turn them, for lack of a better term, uh, to true them up and get them completely round. And so, uh, the dial indicator was only twenty dollars, the, or I'm sorry, ducats, ducat dollar sign, and the mechanism and base was like fifteen bucks, I think. I can't remember how much it was. <coughs> uh, you could probably get a much cheaper setup from, say, Harbor Freight or something like that, I, I don't know. So anyways, it's a, it's a magnetic base, so clearly it's not going to stick to the aluminum of the Hummel. You could probably just set it on this flat surface here, and it probably wouldn't move that much. But, you know, just to make it easier on me, I went ahead and clamped a file to that dust chute, and it's, it's stuck to it pretty good. Um, another thing you want to do, I don't know if you can see in the background here, but uh, I clamped that wheel to that to stop this thing from wanting to move. Because that, you know, when this is upside down, that wheel just wants to flap around because the lever is not attached to it and the mechanism is just kind of floating there. So that clamp back there is stopping this wheel from moving while I turn it because that could give a false reading. And uh, basically you want to get that thing set up as close to the little dial on zero as possible. And then uh, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and zero it out. I'm on the lowest spot of the wheel as marked when I first got these uh, wheels. So I'm going to use this little dial up here to zero us in on, no, that's the wrong way, to zero us in on, down to zero. Where is that? I need to, wrong way. Okay, I'm going to tripod this time so that crybabies like Dale won't have anything to cry about. <coughs> so, hopefully this will be a little bit better. Won't give poor Dale a headache, sensitive Dale. So it's zeroed out, and then here's another thing I just want to show you real quick. Let me uh, turn the screen around so I can see what I'm doing. When you do get it set up, what you want to do is you want to sight that plunger to the center of the, of the wheel that way, and then you also want to make sure that it's parallel with the wheel that way. I think we're good on both fronts. And that's going to give you the most accurate reading as well. So, oh, another thing I want to show you. It's very faint, and it's hard to see. Actually, here, look at this one. The little wheel's labeled as well. You can really see that. So when I got these brand new, from this line to that line was consistent, and then it gradually increased by two thousandths of an inch to this point. Then it was consistent to there, and then obviously, I mean, it's, it, I know it explains itself, but I'm just trying to, you know, be as clear and concise as possible. So that's how I labeled these when I first got them. They were all about the same. There was a, there was a certain distance that was consistent, a certain distance that wasn't, and it was always out two thousandths of an inch. So, right now we're on the low spot as marked when I first got these. So let's see where we've gone after countless wheel scrapings and sandings and I don't know what else wears on these. Let's wait for this piece of shit to focus. This camera sucks. Alright.
little movements. We're about we're about 90 degrees past where we were now. No change, it would appear. It's strange. Okay, still moving. And that's about 180. And we're at 1,000th. Two seventy and back to where we were. It doesn't appear to have uh, changed a lot. Maybe my scraping was luckily corrective in some way. Ninety degrees. I'm just doing the same rotation again. One eighty. 270. Back to where we started. Let me go the other direction to see if there's any kind of change. I mean, it might affect the way it's measured or where it's or reading or whatever. Okay. 90 degrees from where we started. 180 degrees. Two seventy. Back to where we started. Let's do one more rotation just for gits. Ninety. Hmm. This wheel's loose. I wonder if they're supposed to be like that. I doubt it. 180. 270. Back to where we started. Okay. So, seems to have gotten better on that one, but that's just one of three. So, let me get this thing reset up for one of the other wheels, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, I'm all set up on the leading wheel now. So, let's see... Uh, now it's done throughout the years. Uh, all right. Ninety degrees. Jeez, sounds out a lot. Gets up to a three and then down the negative. Man, is that really? Let's go the other way. Wow. So this one is out four thousandths of an inch, it looks like to me. Let's just go real fast and see what it does. That's crazy. So this wheel is out pretty bad on this machine, and this is the leading wheel. I don't know which one of these wheels would have the most impact. I would imagine it would be the small one out back, but the leading wheel has got to be pretty important too. And it looks to me like on this particular machine, it's out four thousandths of an inch. That's double what it was when it was new. And the high and low spots are the same. That was the high, the old high spot. That was the old low spot. So yeah, this thing... This wheel is at four thousandths of an inch. That's pretty bad. So now let's check the small wheel out back and uh, see what we have there. See you in a bit. Okay, now we're set up on this back wheel. Um, on this one, you kind of have to be creative. What I did is clamped my big file to those two hooks, and that thing sticks to it pretty good. Oh, and then. Um, you gotta somehow use some builder shims or somehow wedge that back wheel so that it can't spin freely. The only thing you want to actually spin is the tire, I guess, itself. Alright, focus, you piece of crap. Alright, uh, let's see, it looks like we're about half a thousandth below zero. Let's see what we get here. Dip to one below.
Okay, this one looks like two thousandths still. Let's go the other way and see what we get. Whoa, that was weird. Is that what we're actually getting? Three thousandths? No, that's just two. Okay. So there you have it. Um, what can we do to fix that? Well, like I said, I don't know. Maybe a, maybe we could take them to a machine shop and have them true them up for us or something like that. But um, basically the lesson here is don't rule the wheel, wheels out as a cause of wave just because a brand new set didn't solve it. Um, this brand new set was out two thousandths of an inch. All right, that's it. Um, I hope this has encouraged a lot of people out there to try to get a setup similar to this to measure their own. Uh, it's so easy, there's no reason not to do it. And the more information that we get, the more guys we get gathering this information together, uh, maybe we can take another step towards getting rid of Wave. Uh, we'll see. But I know there was some stat a guy mentioned about uh, running tar paper against the... Um, direction of pre-finished and overlapping the seams and the guy said that the human eye can notice a difference of three thousandths of an inch or something something like that and you know so it is possible I'm trying to just make the point that it is possible that these wheels brand new out of the box being out two thousandths of an inch could still have produced a wave that would be noticeable by the eye so get yourself a setup like this it's cheap and easy there's no reason not to and uh, report back Tell us what your uh, what your wheels are doing. It's all about info. Knowledge is power.